TTM is through the mail, where I send cards out through the mail, hoping they come back signed by the people I sent them to. As always, I will not post the addresses on the video for the players that I get in this video. If you want them to shoot me an email, my email is down below in the description. And let's get started. My first return is from Mr. Jim Wallywander. This is an 88 Tops. Let me put that one back there. 88 Tops. This is an 87 TCMA. I sent him these two cards. He included this one, which was really cool because it's a Columbus Clippers, which is the Yankees minor league team still to this day, Columbus Clippers. Um, so I was super psyched to get that. This is both from the Tigers organization. And then this is a card that he included. It, uh, it's not, this isn't the actual sketch card, but he does draw this. He has a couple of cards that he draws. 89 Fleer, this one, and I'm not sure what else, but this one I've seen a lot of. 89 Fleer I've seen a few times, people get it back. But it's a custom card. He drew it, prints it out, and he signs it. I guess he, he sends the double of whatever card you sent. So I sent this, so he sent that. But I thought that was awesome. It's pretty unique. It's a really good drawing. Looks like him. So a little bit about Jim Wallywander. He's currently 57 years old. He was born in Chicago. He uh, played from 87 to 93. 87 through 88 with the Tigers, 90 with the New York Yankees, and 93 with the Angels. He batted 215, had one home run, and 14 RBIs in the majors. His uh, rise through the minors with the Tigers organization was delayed because of two players that were already on the Tigers, Mr. Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker. But in 1987, May of 1987, he did get the call up. He went one for two against the Twins, and uh, for the rest of the time, he was primarily a defensive substitute or pinch runner in late innings. He was a key figure, though, and the Tigers battled the Blue Jays for the division crown, and in the 12th inning of the season's penultimate game against Toronto, he was a pinch hitter. He scooted home with a game-winning run after Detroit shortstop Alan Trammell drilled a game-winning single through Toronto shortstop Manuel Lee's legs. Frank Tanana pitched a 1-0 shutout the next day, handing the Detroit Tigers the division title. Wally Wander was not on the playoff roster, and Minnesota defeated those Tigers in the ALCS. He played one more year with the Tigers before he was released. He played with the Yankees, and then in Italy before his last game in an Angels uniform in 93. And that's all I got about Jim Wallywander. Didn't have much of a, you know, crazy career. He had a little cup of coffee, as they say. But I was super happy to get that back. He's a great TTMer. So if anyone wants to get him, hit me up. My next return is... This was a really long return. I'll put down right over here how long exactly it was. But Mr. Charlie Huff who played in the majors for like 47 years. Got two index cards by Charlie Huff. I don't have as much room here. I'm not in my normal, my normal spot for TTMs. So I got <clears throat> two index cards. I got his rookie 72 rookie card sign. Signed it right there, Charlie Huff. I don't know about Bob O'Brien and Mike Strayler. I'll, I think Strayler passed away. I think he's also on Bobby Valentine's rookie card in 71, which is a little weird, but all right. Pretty sure, because I have that TTM also. 82 Donruss with the Rangers. Here he's with Dodgers. Uh, this is 86 Diamond Kings, Donruss Diamond Kings with the uh, Rangers also. And then this is uh, 93, first season, Marlins, 93, Upper Deck. Put that one there. Sorry for the glare, I can't do anything about that. Charlie Huff is currently 72 years old. He was actually born in Hawaii, Honolulu, Hawaii. He debuted in 1970 for the Dodgers, and his last MLB appearance was in 1994 for the Marlins. 
until 24 years. He played from the Dodgers from 70 to 80, the Rangers from 80 to 90, the White Sox from 91 to 92, and then the Marlins, 93 and 94. He was an All-Star in 86, and he's in the Texas Rangers Hall of Fame. He had a win-loss record of 216 and 216. He was even at 500. A 3.75 ERA and 2,362 strikeouts. He always looked like he was old to me. Every He looks pretty young here, but everywhere else he looks old. Yeah, I think he... Even though he doesn't have gray hair, hair here, I think he did pitch with gray hair. It says uh, during a 25-season career, so he pitched for 25 seasons, his 216 wins rank 82nd all-time on the all-time win list, tied with Wilbur Cooper and most likely future Hall of Famer, Kurt Schilling. Probably could have gotten in this year, but they didn't want to put him in with Jeter, probably. <clears throat> I'm sure getting anyone controversial in would have only... Uh, been a little bit of a distraction to Jeter's Hall of Fame ceremony. He was the last active player to have been born in the 1940s. He retired at age 46 after the 94 season. He started the Marlins first regular season game in team history on April 5th, pitching six innings for the win as the Marlins defeated the Dodgers 6-3. to So yeah, that's all I got for Mr. Charlie Huff. He did become a coach from 96 to 98. He was a pitching coach for the San Bernardino Stampede in 80. From 98 to 99, he was a pitching coach for the Dodgers. From 2000 to 2002, he was the pitching coach for the Mets. 2006 for the Fullerton Flyers. And then 2007 through 2010 with the Inland Empire 66ers. So, yeah, that's all I got for Mr. Charlie Huff. That's also all I got this week. <clears throat> Guys, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel. A lot more people subscribe than watch, but also a lot more people watch that aren't subscribers, which is really weird. It doesn't make sense. But um, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Comment down below to let me know you like them. Hit the thumbs up, like a, like the videos, share the videos, all that good stuff. Uh, hit me up if you want some addresses for these guys. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.